Uh, so I think we're first going uh, to Pennsylvania uh, to Tyler. So Tyler, you're up with the good doctor. Awesome, Scott. Thank you so much. And Dr. Spencer, it's, it's truly a pleasure to meet you. Um, as, as many know on the call, I'm a podcast host, and, and I've had the honor of interviewing so many incredible people uh, over the, the course of my show. And one of the really interesting things that I found over my 100 plus interviews uh, was actually around the habits of highly successful professionals and ultimately really trying to distill down some of these, these habits into actionable items that listeners could implement immediately in their job. So um, being an Olympian yourself, a world-class artist, and having worked with um, Richard Branson, Chris Voss, um, you mentioned that there's um, uh, some things about uh, thinking smart and compressing timeline that I thought was, was really well. Um, and I'd be interested to hear, are there any common daily habits between all these world-class professionals um, that you believe that everyone should try to start Im immediately implementing in their daily routines to help with some of that success? Well, I think it's really looking at the day taken as a whole and the way that I do it with my clients is that everything that we do prior to the workday starting is what I call preparation. You know, there's a, a strategy that we do to prepare to step onto the field. You should always warm yourself up before you step on the field. Otherwise you can get injured. It's the same way in life. There are some preparatory things that we need to do to step onto the field, ready to play the game. And then once we've gone through a day of high productivity, then there's a recovery side to it. And your recovery has to match your output so that you know you can show up day in and day out and perform at your best. So I think we need to be mindful that if we can't control our day, which is the fundamental unit of life, then we can't control our life. And we can't get the trust from other people to follow us indefinitely into the future. So that's one thing that I would uh, certainly suggest that we, we make sure that we do, and there's a couple of important rituals in the morning that I suggest that we do to set ourselves up, to step onto the field, to make the first play that we do a, potentially a touchdown. I feel that uh, number one, we need to spend some time uh, anchoring ourselves uh, in reality. And uh, there's a particular um, thing that I, I do that I found to be very successful with people that I work with. And that's in the morning when you have a first awareness of a new day, we're kind of in a, a state of twilight. And this is where we're going from sleep, which is a alpha brainwave, uh, excuse me, a delta brainwave where we ascend up to a theta brainwave. That's like a dreamlike state in that dreamlike state. When you have a first awareness of a new day, if you just pause and sit there, and you kind of look what's in your inbox about what you need to be doing that day in relationship to a previous problem, then you may find your answer sitting in that inbox because that's that unique period of time where that can happen. But humans aren't likely to do that because they think, well, if I'm laying in bed looking within myself, then somebody else is getting the advantage where I should actually be preparing to make sure I can run at the front of the pack, which isn't true at all. Because if you don't expose yourself to solutions that are gifted to you while you're sleeping, your brain is collating the previous day and it's finding solutions to the problems, then you're missing an opportunity to compress your time and uh, conserve your energy from moment zero. And I, again, that's counterintuitive, but you know, as far as I know, many of the things that people do, their fear-based survival responses to the presumption that if they don't do this, they're going to get left behind. And that's not a reason to take action on anything. You know, we kind of have to look at the evidence as to what is going to work to set us up for, for really success. I think some of the other things that I think that are really important uh, during the day is that one of the last things uh, that we should do before we start to engage people, places, and things is that uh, we need to ask ourselves how we're going to show up for other people. Because, you know, what I know from my daughter is that she was uh, exposed to the most, we adopted her at the age of 10 from Columbia when I was 58. People thought it was crazy. But, you know, my daughter did not ask to be since the age of four repeatedly uh, sexually abused or beat up. She didn't ask for that, you know, and she has some challenges as it relates to that. But here's what I want to say here is that never discount the value of how you show up in any word that you say, because you never know who's watching or who's listening. And my daughter hung on my every word. That was her lifeline to her bigger future. 
And I knew that whatever my challenges were, that was not her problem. And my job was to show up on her behalf and give her the best that I could possibly give her to help her find a way beyond that which she didn't ask for. And I feel like we need to show up and be of service to everyone that we interact with because you don't know what you're going to be saying to who by the words that you say or your presence of being. And let's not decide that what that is in advance. Let's just decide to so, show up from the highest value that we have to contribute to others. And then I always look at a picture that's on my desk, like, why am I doing this? I look at, there's a picture of my wife who's been faithfully with me for 37 years. I also do it because of my daughter who didn't speak English and we didn't speak Spanish when we adopted her. And she graduated from high school where nobody in her family graduated from elementary school. This was a, a victory over someone that was exposed to every human cruelty that you can imagine. So it was faithfully showing up and remembering, why am I doing this? And then I have this silhouette of a crowd. You know, why am I doing this? I'm doing this on behalf of my clients on other people because I want to share with them what I know. You know, I'm 70 right now. So there's nothing that I haven't seen. I've seen it all. And I want to make sure that everybody on this planet has an opportunity to be their own full potential player, to live a life of value, purpose, and meaning and contribution. And so I think those are the assets uh, in part that we need to be mindful of because when we come from that space, we kind of feel like we earn our dinner. We kind of feel like we earn our sleep because we've really done something of high value to other people that has a ripple effect that we shouldn't decide what the impact of that is. And those are some of the things among the many that I think are extraordinarily valuable for us to do. Thank you so much.